but uh, today we're going to just focus on one, which is the intracavernosal injection therapy or ICI uh, or just penile injections. And it's intracavernosal because it goes into the corpora cavernosum, which are those erectile bodies that fill up with blood. So how do EED medications work? Uh, as we talked about, it basically increases the blood flow to the penis to achieve and maintain an erection strong enough for sex. Um, usually the, the pills, uh, obviously like Viagra, Cialis, you take those and they'll open up the blood vessels, but they open up the blood vessels somewhere else in the body too. So you have risk of overdose and side effects. We have much less of that issue when we're delivering the medication directly to the penis. So we can deliver much stronger concentrations, doses uh, of medication to the penis without worrying about headaches, flushing, or your blood pressure dropping. So all of these medications, if, if you didn't go to med school, they're basically all medications that work to, to, to dilate the blood vessels by different mechanisms of action. And when you get your, your vial with the, with the medication in it, it's typically a mixture of one, two, three, or all four of these medications. So the bimix is a mixture of two of them, papaverine and pentolamine. Trimix is three and quadmix is four. So you can't just like go to a store and pick up Trimix. It has to come from a compounding pharmacy where each of these drugs are put into the, into the solution. And that's the medication that you're delivering to the corpora cavernosum for the intracavernosal injection. Okay, so this is kind of specifics that you'll have to talk uh, with your, your physician about, the ordering provider. The MenMD obviously can't order the medication for you. They're, they're just take the order and, and make the medication and, and send it to you. So the, all of along the list here, you see the different um, concentrations uh, of Bimix, uh, Trimix, they even have a, uh, an alternative, low alprostadol trimix, where the ratios are somewhat different, and then quad mix at the bottom. Um, these numbers here, like at the top where you see biomix number three, that's sort of an internal pharmacy thing that MenMD does. Uh, the doctor just puts in their, their order, and then it just makes it easier uh, for the pharmacy to say, okay, I'm taking biomix number three and they'll give you a certain volume of that uh, concentration uh, of drug. Um, usually people start with the, with the trimix, but that'll be a dis discussion between you uh, uh, and your doctor. Um, Alprostadil, uh, it can cause some side effects, an aching sensation in the penis. Uh, so sometimes that's why they have the low alprostadil trimix with different, uh, different ratio. Um, and then same thing with quad mix, there's different ratios. We can, okay, needle size and dose volume. So uh, needle and syringe, the medication uh, injected into, into the penis is a very small needle. Uh, the needle sizes in general can vary in two ways, the, the gauge, which is the thickness of the needle and the length, obviously how, how long the needle is. And generally speaking, we're going to be using the smallest types of needles possible. So when people talk about uh, pain with injection, uh, there really should be almost, almost no pain because these needles are, are so small. It's mainly uh, a psychological uh, thing. And I'll show you in the, uh, in the example here, you'll see the, uh, uh, the needle. And then same thing, the, the syringe is the plastic part that actually draws up and delivers the medication. There's obviously different size syringes, but the ones that you'll typically use have a maximum volume of 0.5 cc's. A cc and an ml is the same thing, uh, so you're talking very low volumes as well. And the, the syringe and the needle will be part of the uh, prescription for, from the doctor. Um, so that has to come in uh, too, and then MenMD gives you what the doctor ordered. And then the dose volume is just how much of the fluid you're, you're getting. And depending on the concentration and the volume, that's how much of the drug you get. Okay, so starting dose, adjust, log present. So basically, this all comes down to, to you and your physician deciding uh, on a starting dose. Obviously, they're going to want to do a, a relatively lower starting dose, the safe dose, so that you don't have uh, what's called a priapism, an erection that lasts longer than four hours. And then they can uh, titrate up or increase the dose uh, as needed. And the first injection 
uh, is typically done in the office. So the doctor can make sure that you're, you're doing it right and that you have the, the appropriate uh, response. So adjusting the, the dose if needed, uh, that's obviously going to be a discussion with you and, and the doctor. So this is basically just a, the, on the top right, the rigidity scale from 0 to 10. 0 is obviously completely flaccid and 10 is max. The goal is this 7 to 9 range. That's sort of what most men have during an erection. Uh, there's nothing per se that's wrong with getting to 10, but when you're talking about doing the, the injections, we worry that people are giving themselves too high uh, of a dose. Um, we typically, uh, as urologists, tend to see problems around Valentine's Day or maybe on your, your wife's birthday or something where somebody decides to give themselves five times the usual dose of the medication and then they show up in the emergency room with an erection that won't go down and it's a, it's a bad situation. But if you're using the dose that the doctor prescribed for you and you're using it appropriately, this issue of priapism or an, an erection lasting longer than four hours is almost unheard of. Um, so it's very important that you're talking with your doctor and you're staying in this target range. Um, full erection that doesn't come down means it's too long. Do not exceed the maximum dose. Uh, you only can do one injection in a 24-hour period and only three to four times uh, per week. So side effect mitigation, obviously using proper technique. Uh, the first dose is done in the office. Um, obviously, make sure you're talking with your urologist to get the proper uh, dose concentration. Uh, don't always use the same site. Um, so you can go anywhere up and down the shaft of the penis as long as you're not injecting it into the head of the penis. Um, and then again, only once in 24 hours. Uh, in terms of storage, um, when you have your vial, um, you want to keep it refrigerated. And the total shelf life of a refrigerated vial is 60 days. Now, that can be a little bit less if you puncture it early. So let's say you, you puncture it on the first day, then the vial will only last for 30 days. So it's only 30 days from the time that you first puncture it or 60 days in total, whichever one comes first. Obviously, if you puncture it on day 50, it's going to sort of go bad by day 60. Now, it doesn't actually go bad. It's not like you're going to get sick if you inject yourself with a vial that's 70 days old, but the medication may be a little bit less active, uh, a little bit less effective. Okay, accessories help. We can talk about that. Um, so, the insole tote is basically just a, a tote bag. I've got an example here that I can I can show. It's nothing uh, really out of this world. Basically, I'll show it more when we're on the full screen, just what it sounds like. It's a tote bag that has the uh, places to hold the syringes and the medications. And then it has uh, on the inside sleeve here, uh, one of those ice pack type of things. So you can keep your medication cold if you're if you're going on vacation or something, this will stay cold enough, likely for your um, your travel time. And this Insole Ease Auto Injector um, is basically really for men that have issues with dexterity that they wouldn't be able to use the um, the syringe. Otherwise, I think it makes it more complicated than, than needed. And then the Sharps container uh, to dispose of your Sharps properly. One um, that comes with one of these little rectangular things you shouldn't be just throwing needles especially used needles uh, in the trash can that's a that's a biohazard okay and then obviously for more information you can talk with your doctor but you can look on some of the information that's available on menmd on the on their website or you can also uh, call uh, for help as well If you found this video helpful and want to stay in the loop with our growing men's health community, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified when new content is available. Your support makes it easier for other men like you to find these helpful resources. Thanks again for watching. We hope to see you again.